everyone, this is Melissa from Lawn Fawn's design team, and I'm one of the scrapbook girls, so I know you're used to seeing card projects on this channel, but I thought it would be fun to give you a look at how I put together a project life layout using these fun new papers from Lawn Fawn's Into the Woods collection. So there you can see the front and the back, and this has a great fall theme to it, but as you'll see in a minute, I'm going to use it for photos that are actually from April, so not fall at all. And I went ahead and cut apart both the border strip and the journaling card sheet. And I'm going to be using the Design A page protectors from Project Life, though I'm not going to lay them out on my mat because they tend to glare a bit in the lights. So just pretend that as I'm laying these photos out, that they're on a Design A page protector in each of the pockets. Now you may have seen some of my Project Life videos over on Two Piece, but if you're not used to my process, I start with a pile of photos from the week, and they are roughly chronologically stacked from the beginning of the week, which for me is Sunday, and I end on Saturday. And I just start to arrange them across the page in, again, roughly that chronological order until there's a good balance. And once I filled all the pockets with photos, I go back and start looking through the journaling cards, especially right now, the 3x4 cards, to try to fill in the empty spaces. So what I'm doing right now is trying to find some cards with some good writing space, which is why I'm flipping past a lot of the pattern cards, which while they're really pretty, uh, right now I just need some space to write on. And you saw me swap those blue cards around because I would have ended up with two blue cards next to each other. And I like to balance across my pages. So you'll see me do something on one side of the page and then try to do the same thing on the other. Now, I went to those 12 by 12 sheets and cut off both the border strips that you saw the two I think I'll use on this page, as well as a four by six chunk from each of the pattern papers. Now, normally I would have probably use the 6x6 pad from this collection instead of cutting into a full 12x12 12 12 sheet. But at the time I filmed this video, the design team hadn't yet gotten our 6x6 pads, so you can just substitute those for this step if that works better for you. But what I'm doing right now, again, like I said, is just trying to balance across the page. There's some dark brown in the top left corner from the photo of my husband working in our front flower garden. So I balanced it out on the bottom of the right hand side page with the brown wood grain print. And as I'm putting these papers in, I've spotted a couple of places that I want to use these adorable new flares from the collection. So I'm just going to place those in a couple of different places so I don't forget to add them at the end because I really am prone to being an ADD crafter and completely forgetting what I wanted to do by the end of the layout. So that is stuck in there, and now I will fill in the remaining few 3x4 spots with some pattern cards to kind of go behind the photos. And I also need to fill in this 4x6 spot at the top. And as you'll see later on in the video, I'll end up kind of making my own card to go in the top. And while I'll eventually use this orange piece of paper as a backing for everything, I won't be using that green uh, journaling card. I'll replace it with something else. And I'm just swapping that blue card with the orange border over onto the right side again, or to the left side, sorry, again for balance so that it's not right up against the orange. And just to put some orange on the other page because there wasn't a whole lot over there yet. I love, love, love Lawn Fawn's alphabet dies and the new Coles ABCs, the more straight line font than Quinn's, were just released at the Summer CHA. So I'm going to use them to make a few small um, subtitles for my Project Life pages. A lot of times letter stickers, especially thickers, can be really too big to go into a pocket and to use on more than maybe one card as a title. And so I love that Lawn Fawn's letters are small enough to be used in several different pockets. So I'll just run these through the Sizzix and they'll run through pretty much any manual die cutting machine that you have to punch out my letters. I have one other bit of die cutting that I want to do, and that's using the new Stitch Journaling Card die. This die is a perfect fit for the pockets in a Project Life page protector, and the set also comes with a set of inserts that you can use to make cutouts inside your cards. So I've chosen the chevron one, lined it up inside the card, and I've secured everything with a piece of washi tape to keep it from moving around while I roll it through the die cutting machine. And as soon as I get this peeled up, you'll be able to see the adorable stitched edge around the card as well as the cutout chevrons. 
Now that card, while it will fit in a 3x4 pocket, I'm using it in the top right corner as you can see. And like I said, ADD Crafter, I was working on that top pocket and now I'm back to embellishing again with my cutout letters as well as some more of the flare buttons. Now when I'm embellishing Project Life pages, I try to keep it really minimal and you'll see that I mostly put things along the edges or at the join or at the edge where photos meet. And I'm also going to stamp a few embellishments for this page as well, just because I love this new wood grain background stamp and the small stamps that come with it. I used the leaf ink from American Crafts, it's a pigment ink, to stamp off the hearts and then grabbed a brown sugar ink pad to do a little bit of stamping inside the hearts as well. And once these are stamped, and I'm just using a really cheap plain white cardstock, I'll grab a pair of scissors and cut those out to make some embellishments. So that little bit is going to get tucked up there with the fox flare and a couple of sequins. And then I'll go back and do a little bit more stamping for one other spot on this page. And I've pulled out a stamp, you can't see it quite yet, there it is, from the Into the Woods stamp set. It's the little speech bubble that says hello. And again, I'm going to stamp it and then just grab some fine tip scissors and cut it out. And it's going to go right next to this little photo collage. Now I also have some alphabet stamps lined up to make a subtitle for this card using the new Milo's ABC stamps. And it just says Red Lobster, which is the restaurant we were at. And as soon as I get a glue dot behind this Hello Speech Bubble and get it stuck down, I will go ahead and stamp that right next to it using some white ink. Um, this is just a white chalk inker from Prima and it looks great right on top of that brown cardstock, stands out really nicely. So now it's time to add a few sequins across the top. I love these just for adding little touches here and there. And eventually I will go back and glue each of these down with just a tiny, tiny dab of glossy accents. But for now, I'm just going to lay them out to make sure that I like the balance. Again, that, that word balance across the page. And I'm also going to pull in a few of these border strips cut off of the 12 by 12 papers. This brown arrow print will add a little bit of that nice dark heavy color down on the bottom of this page. So I'll stick it down and then stick the flare button right down. Yours will come with self adhesive. The design team ones did not come with foam adhesive on the back because they weren't quite ready for that yet. And now it's time to embellish the top of this journaling card as well. And again, I'm going to go for one of these little border strips. And I'm just trying different ones out to see which one I like. And eventually it's going to be that hello strip, I think. So I will just cut a little piece off of it and adhere it right across the top of that journaling card. Not all the way across, kind of hanging off the edge a little bit. And then add some sequins across the edge. I also wanted to add a little something extra down the side of this green pattern paper behind one of my photos that wasn't quite 3x4. So again, I'm going to pull out one of those little inserts, this time the stars, from the stitched journaling card set, uh, die set, and just run it through my Sizzix. And this time I did not washi tape it down, I was all brave and bold, to cut a few stars out of the edge. And then to make sure that those show up, I'm just going to grab that same white cardstock that I was stamping on earlier and cut off a little bit of it that will fit behind those stars and washi tape it in place so that you'll see white stars showing through the paper. I had also die cut some letters, again using Cole's ABCs, for my title card. So I just cut out April, which was the month for these photos, as I said earlier. And then I'm going to pull Milo's ABCs out again and use the numbers to stamp the dates for this week. Before I stamp though, I need to go ahead and stick these letters down so that I know where to actually stamp those numbers. And I'm using my ATG gun to stick these down, but an even easier way is if you have a Xyron like the 900 or the little X, is to pull these letter stickers through that. Now you can also run a full sheet of paper or a partial sheet of paper through your Xyron 900 before 
you actually die cut and then you'll be making your own stickers. And I had actually meant to do that for this layout, but I could not find the Xyron, which is hard to believe because it's such a big machine. Um, but I have located it now and it is great for making your own letter stickers. So with the die cut letters in place, now I'll just stamp those numbers and please excuse my head getting in the way. Stamp the numbers for the week, which is April 21st through 27th, and put a little dash in place to finish off the title card. And with that, this Project Life layout is complete, and we'll take a look at it now inside the page protectors, where everything is finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at how to use some Lawn Fawn project products on a Project Life layout, and thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a fantastic week.